15, and we've, uh, this meeting has been posted in three places, right? Six fifteen, eight fifteen. 8 15, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just a test, nobody. Uh, 18, 15, that works. Yeah, yeah, 18, 15, <laughs> yeah. And on the website? Yep. And email to interested parties, so we can have this meeting. And what we do, does anyone have any additions to the agenda? I know Deb, you, yeah, you're on there. Um, anyone else? Oh wait, I'm just collecting additions oh, to it oh, now. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else have something they want to add to the agenda? No. So we'll um, start with you then. Oh, okay. Yeah. Since she's ready. Yeah. Well, I'm Deb Moore. This is Carol Zeglin, and we're from Rochester. And we would just like to invite well, everybody and anybody, but particularly the board members, to come next week to on, on Tuesday, the 16th, at 6.30 at the library to an informational meeting on 5G wireless technology. Uh, I'll be showing a video, and there will be a discussion. And it's likely that you might know nothing at all about this, um, but all the more reason to come in and inform yourself. It, it is on the way, and it's a huge thing, and it will impact everyone's life. Everyone. So, I'm asking you to come. That's all. All right. Oh, who are you sponsoring? Pardon me? Is this through uh, AC FiberNet, or? No, it's not. Yeah, no, no, it's kind of, um, uh, um, there's just sort of individual citizens that are, are getting together to really oppose this and to look into it and oppose it. I do have some flyers. Okay, I get you now. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, this is sure. an opposition to 5G. Oh, yes, it sure is an opposition. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, anybody else would like any flyers? This is just really... Thanks. So, um, before we um, before we continue on with the meeting, there's a couple of housekeeping items that we need to do. One, we failed to choose who's going to be the chair. I just continued acting as the chair, but if you guys um, have I an opinion about that. I nominate June Hendricks as I'll chair. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, I'll do it again. All right. Thank you. Official. That was official. official. Yeah. <laughs> and also, we have um, someone who stepped up to fill the empty space in the cemetery commission, and that would be Nancy Woolley. Are you still willing to? Take that grave position. Oh. Oh. Yes. Uh, okay. So I'd move to appoint um, Nancy Willie to the Central Cemetery Commission. I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations. Perfect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And also we have the minutes from the last meeting, which I um, didn't find any problems with. Yep. I've moved to approve those. Second that. Okay. Aye. Aye. And that leads us on to Chris Metric. Welcome. Thank you. So every, uh, every year I get around to the select boards forest occupies on the Rochester and the Middlebury Ranger District at least once, if not twice. I try not to become a frequent flyer, um, but that depends on what the issues are and what the select board likes. So this is my first appearance for Rochester in 2019. And I just I do it just to update the community on uh, the select board on some things that might be happening in that town um, on the horizon, currently happening, some new things. So there's not a whole, um, I don't have a big laundry list for Rochester this year, but just a couple of things. One is um, I see that the roads agreement was signed, so $2,300 in the annual roads agreement was signed and put into place. So we're happy to do that. You're one of the few towns um, on the north half of the forest that gets um, roads money. So um, 
congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. And do you have a copy of it? I don't know. I just got this in the mail today. Yeah, yeah you did get one? Okay, very good. Um, the other thing related to roads is a little bit bigger deal, I think. Um, we have about eighty or $90,000 that we can put into a separate roads agreement with the town for the West Hill Bridge. Mm -hmm. um, design money, probably most of that would end up going to design money, and then there'll be a smaller portion that this year, anyways, it would be able to be put into that agreement for construction. So I know this has been a long-standing concern for the town and the residents up on West Hill and uh, becoming a, more of a concern for us because due to the approval of the Robinson project, we're gonna be hauling at some point in the future, hauling timber down that hill and uh, the bridge can't sustain the weight of the log trucks. So we would like to be able to, you know, put in some money to assist the town in upgrading that so, so it can handle the, the weight of the log truck and then it would also help with, I think, other access up to oh. West Hill. So. We don't quite know what the exact number is yet, but it's somewhere in that range of eighty to ninety thousand dollars. And they, think, I think Brian Austin, our forest engineer, said that he thought probably most of it would go into the design. Maybe sixty-five thousand would go into the design, and that would leave a little bit left over for um, to put towards construction. Mm -hmm. So that's on. And yeah, when plan. when are you planning to uh, be pulling logs out of it? We don't have any immediate plan right now. That sale has not been scheduled up there. We are, I'll talk about Robinson in a minute. Um, it probably wouldn't be for two to three years in that area. I mean, we can't until yeah. we get the, <laughs> you know, we're kind of caught between a rock and a hard place, so we can't really get the timber out with the bridge that's in place. We could require, I mean, the logger could come in and we could require the logger to, um, you know, work with an adjacent private landowner or the town to, put a temporary bridge like the Bailey Bridge that was in there or lay another bridge over the top of that bridge if it met code. Um, but I think the be better, to just better, be better for yeah. everyone, I think yeah. if we, we'll probably schedule that sale late in the life of the Robinson implementation project, um, just so that we can, I mean, we could wait some more time until it's done, so. And we know some West Hill residents that would really like that. I'm sure, I, and I know the yeah. same residents. Um, yep. Yeah. They've been to talk to me numerous times out of the office about that concern, you know, so. Okay. So that'll come along. I don't know what the timeline for that agreement is. Brian has to kind of, the number, the dust has to settle around budget this year. We just got our final budget this past week. It is April. Fiscal year started in October. We just got our final budget. Um, so he's, he, pushing numbers around, but that's the number he thinks. And once he gets a hard number, another agreement will come to the town um, for signatures and, you know, yeah. all that right. whole process. Chris, can I ask you a question? Yeah, um, uh, this 80 to 90,000, is that the total amount? Or would you be, are you asking the town to cost share with the Forest Service? It is, it would come, I think it is a cost share agreement, what we would enter into. That's not the entire amount. That's what we have to this year. Put in. We think we can get the design, and the design can be done. Like Cricket could probably do the design for within the that amount of money, and probably less than that this year. But then next year, we would hope that we would have additional money that we would be able to put towards it as well, towards the construction phase. I don't think we'll be able to pay for the entire construction phase of it, but um, a good hunk of it, hopefully. Do you have any idea percentage cost percentage town versus? It, it, it has to be at least 20%, a 20% match by whoever we enter into that. If it's if it's handled through a challenge cost share agreement, which right. some of these are, it, the minimum match is a 20%. Good to have the two to three years notice. And there, there, there might be other federal money that could be, you know, grabbed for this as well. Um, there are other grant programs, FLAP money, federal lands access program money could be um, utilized for this as well. Um, that's, that's federal money um, managed by the state for access to federal lands. Um, as the biggest land federal land holder in the state and one of the one of the only big federal landowners in the state, um, we stand a good chance of getting that. That's how the Churchill Bridge in Brandon was yeah. replaced was that that program. But the state announces it, and they announce it only when they have the funding available. So there'll be more conversations on West Hill in the future, sure. I think. Wonderful. And I can try to find out. Once we get the number for this year, the hard number for this year in that agreement, um, I can, we can go into a little more detail.
detail about what the future looks like, like how, how it would be man, that money would be managed. The first thing is to get the design done so that we know, you know what we're trying to construct. Perfect. We are interested in pursuing. Do you have another question there, Tom? Um, uh, no, not, I'm thinking about it. Yeah. No, I just. This is kind of my first volley to the town to let yeah. you know that we have money this year because we've right. talked about it in the past and we didn't we actually didn't think we were going to have money or we thought we were going to have much less money to put it to design but just the way our budget fell out there's well, a lot of money in roads but this year. the uh the logging operation on the robinson project yeah. when is that due to start so uh, on west hill or just in general it, well I'll, let's let's pick west hill for now i yeah that's it's unscheduled at this point scheduled yeah you okay. saying it kind of pushed that to the end of the schedule to give more time i was going to say the bridge, the bridge is but, probably yeah. two years away oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so robinson the life of the, the timber management in robinson will usually span five to seven to up to ten years mm -hmm. um you know the closest example would be okay. the upper white river project which is in granville and hancock <laughs> that decision was signed in 2000 and and I believe 2011 and the last timber sale was just completed this winter so it's a lifespan of nine years from the first one from the decision to the last timber sale um, so there'll be multiple timber sales coming out of that one Robinson decision the first two we're working on right now they're not related to West Hill Road so we would probably schedule the West Hill Road one to be late in the to ensure that the bridge project was complete before we hauled timber off of that. Okay, okay. Um, while we're on that topic, I have another question that yeah. I, some residents have asked me. Um, if you're a an adjacent landowner to this project, mm -hmm. um, there's, a, there's a buffer zone between private land and uh, the actual logging operation? Oh, there doesn't have to be a buffer zone. It doesn't have to be. No, but there, if, if a private landowner was concerned about that, yes. Um, they should talk, come and talk to me. Okay. You should redirect those folks to me because we can most often make that work. Like Harlan, for example, is an adjacent landowner and he's approached me and said he would actually like us to come right up to his property line just to help him get him a little more sun on the solar panels there. Um, with, in some, you know, with some level of harvest, so it increase that. We can also work the other way. We didn't hear from anyone during either of the official comment periods for that project. So anybody specific? So the default that, is you go up to, you right up to the property line. We can, yeah, yeah. But if no one says anything, is that what happens? We probably, if it was someone's house right there, yeah. um, we would probably put a buffer in, like we wouldn't want a you know tree, a tree length at least, okay, you know, average tree length at least, so that we wouldn't have a leave an isolated tree standing there and the wind would come and it would blow it over and it would fall on that person's property. But the default is yes, I mean, we would go right up to our property line. Okay, thank you. But anybody concerned about that, you can redirect them to okay. me in my office. We'll talk Thanks. to them. Um, excuse me, Chris, when, yes. when is the, how many years is it till the Robertson Logging Project you're estimating? Or you well, it was, signed, it was signed in December. Okay. And then um, the decision is that NEPA, the National Environmental Policy and Act analysis, is you know it has a lifespan before it starts to get stale, before okay. things start to change on the ground. Trees grow, endangered species lists change, things like that. Do we have to relook at it? We think of it as having a life of five, seven, ten years, depending on the resource. Okay. And then we would. But it know, hasn't started yet. Okay. We haven't done any. Um, we haven't done any management actions that was specifically approved in the Robinson project. Okay. It's, yeah. We're prepping, but not okay. yet. Thank you. There has been survey. Yeah, survey. There's prep work that's been done, but no actual. That's not survey of trees <coughs> or survey of the property. Survey of the property. Um, there's been a lot of landline marking in Rochester as of late mm -hmm. um, related to the project because we try to refresh our landlines before we go in and we start to lay out timber so that we know where the line is. Um, so that you've seen a lot of that, there's a lot of fresh pa red paint around. Um, so that's what that is. But we're also going in and marking trees too for timber sales. So I have that a couple, I won't talk about Robinson just a little bit too as to where we're at, as long as we're done with West well, Hill. Yeah, I guess while you're up, you wanna give us an update on Yeah, that? so yeah. the decision was signed in December um, we're beginning to th 
plan implementation. We have a process that we go through internally um, where we plan out timber sales. We divide up the approved timber management activities into timber sales geographically related. Um, and then all the other activities, recreation, watershed, fisheries, wildlife projects, special uses, things like that, they all kind of fall in line as well. We lay out a schedule, you know, think of a calendar along the wall like that over the years, and we kind of lay out like the sequence of how things would make sense because the, our timber management can actually um, fund some of our other activities. So we can, take, we can retain receipts from timber harvest, um, the income that we would get from a logger, and use it to do projects like that was done out at um, CCC Camp, the, the large woody debris work, mm -hmm. um, things like that, parking lot creation, parking lot maintenance, things like that for access, federal access or Bridge. public access. So that money stays local? Some of it does. Depends on the type of sale. Um, we're working on issuing, uh, there are a number of special use permits, mostly access, driveways, things like that, to folks who were either expired or had a new special use. So those permits are now being issued. We're still working with Mr. Bean. Um, we have two timber sales that we're working actively marking that are scheduled to be sold in 2019. So that's how we're measured as volume sold, timber volume sold to the Washington office. And so the two sales are, one of them Swans Mill, which is up Maple Hill Road. Just keep going up there along this, what we call the Swans Mill Snowmobile Trail. Um, and then there's another one, which we're calling Soup House, um, which is up if you go past Chittendenburg Campground on the left-hand side of the road, kind of behind where Joe Maez's place is there, up on the hill where it's federal land up there, kind of from the Chittendenburg Road up to where the backcountry ski parking lot is, um, right on 73. Those are the two first timber sales coming out of Robinson. And they're, um, they're, not, they're gonna be marked this summer the earliest harvesting would occur would probably be um, the, this upcoming winter, winter 2019, 2020. But once it's sold, it's really up to the purchaser to schedule um, that timber sale activity. They can choose to start right then or they could wait a couple of years before they started. Um, it is a require, our contracts require that loggers interface with the town about town laws, that's not our responsibility to interface with you about their use of roads and road closures and things like getting overweight permits. Um, that's the responsibility of whoever purchases the timber and is, is cutting the timber and hauling it. So um, we always redirect them to the town. So the towns often have questions about that. So uh, if residents have any question about truck traffic or anything, it would be on us or would be... No, they could talk to us about truck traffic. Um, and like speed limits and things like that if they feel trucks are I know that the folks out of bingo are concerned about truck speed when we get out there mm -hmm. and so we we will put those restrictions on them but as far as any permitting that they need like they often need overweight permits to yes. haul logs that comes from the town that doesn't okay. come from the forest or we okay. won't come to you asking for overweight permits We're just answering that's the law responsibility if somebody comes in and says you know I was walking my dog in a truck that would come to us because we have we have a staff person, a timber sale administrator, that focuses solely on managing the contractors perfect. in timber sales. Um, perfect. So, Chris, if they have those concerns, when you say contact us, do you mean call the the Rochester yeah. office? Come to the force, yeah. Yep. Or, or come there, and that timber sales person is there. Right. Yes. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you. Just one um. So it, over the next couple of months, we'll get a better idea of what the other timber sales, how they'll kind of sequence. And once they do, I'll certainly provide the town with that information. Because um, most of the timber sale activity is in Rochester and Chittenden. And the, the portion that's in Chittenden, you feel like it's in Rochester because you access it via Rochester. So all the access for timber management will come through Rochester. Um, and we, do, we know there's also concern about um, both the Pine Brook Ski Loop and then the Chittenden um, Brook Ski Network. Um, we're going to plan to and hope to, we'll never impact both of those systems at the same time so that there'll always be a place for folks to go walk their dogs, go for a cross country ski where there wouldn't be timber management activity happening because both those, both those loops will at one point or another be impacted by log traffic, log truck traffic in the winter, but we're not going to impact them both at the, in the same winter. We'll stagger them so that that, that won't occur. Yeah, I 
think that is about it. There's a number of other projects going on as part of Robinson. Um, the hut has been at the Chittenden Brook, is in Chittenden, not Rochester, but again, kind of access from this way has been very popular over the course of the winter. Um, there's the, the Bellamont Trail, the kind of Vermont end-to-end -end mountain bike system that's being de devised, kind of same model as the Catamount. Um, we have trail, pieces of trail network that will be installed over the upcoming five, six years in partnership with Rasta and Bimba and Vermont Huts. Um, establishing that, that's going to run through the, the area as well. Um, we have some watershed restoration work, some more large woody debris projects going in a certain, on a much smaller scale than a CCC camp. Um, kind of at the beginning of Bingo Road at Janet, Janet Brown's property there, and then at uh, the pond. That pond is very, very undercut on the backside, so we're going to try to do some work to ensure that it doesn't, the dam doesn't blow out at the end of it. Are the loggers informed of the, the route of the Belmont Trail, like utilizing that? in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> what do you mean, are they informed? Well, so it's non-existent at this point, right. so. Right, and yet, I mean, when I ski, I use logging ropes a lot of the time. Yep. So, like, I'm not sure if they, they're interconnected with what Rust is proposing or the development. Their um, logging contracts are an interesting thing because we can't require them to do anything that's outside of or the scope. Tell them where to go. Yeah, I mean, we can work with them and suggest like, you know, we're yeah. thinking there's gonna be a trail network that goes through this area, you know. Our timber sale administrator could say, you know, let's lay your main skid road yeah. through here. Mm -hmm. The two don't always line up, like what you might consider the right. greatest mountain bike route or ski route isn't what the logger's necessarily gonna see as a great skid route. Where we can, we do. Right. We try to we try to gain get some synergy on that when we can. Okay. All right. Well, that's all I have unless you have anything for me. No, it's a lot. Yeah, thank you. All right. So, assuming from <clears throat> what you said about staggering and all that stuff, and the fact that something might be going on up in Chittenden Brook, it would be safe to assume that there won't be anything happening in Bingo this winter, possibly next winter. Because I mean. Yeah, I'll have a better idea of that in a, in a couple of months, Harlan. When I do, I'll share it. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, that's a safe assumption that there won't be anything in Bingo this winter or in Chittenden Brooks this winter. winter. Um, this upcoming winter. After that, if this one ever ends, um, after that, it's uh, it's a little fuzzy. I can't really put my finger on it. But it's it's safe to assume that never will both the Pine Book Ski Loop and the Chittenden Nordic System be impacted at the same time. So as long as they're doing something up there, they won't be doing anything. There. Right, yeah. I mean, they may not be able to, yeah, that's correct. Because even if they're driving on the road, that would be an impact to the loop, yeah. Great. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dean and Connie. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for hearing our concern. I also want to thank Terry for his input and in bringing this to our attention. Um, I'm sure you don't peruse the, the stats that often, but um, the situation is that. What we, a party you had, man. I'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, let me, let me back up and say, I don't know if this affects anything, but. Um, since we located our linen business there in that building, I think we have contributed thousands of dollars to the collection of water and sewer funds. So I, I feel like we're a, a fairly good customer in that department. Um, so we realized that this quarter, the water and sewer bill was uh, quite high and not only was the first quarter of this year about half of the entire previous year, this quarter was $1,681, and the same quarter last year was $265. So this is really our slow time in the linen shop, and we were quite surprised when we got that bill. So um, we started investigating, and. Uh, narrowed it down to a leaky toilet, and there are three toilets in the Cushman building, 
of course the one that runs is the one that our we have a tenant in that space who works very sporadically and after we talked to her she admitted that yeah it ran occasionally but you know I jiggle it I didn't think it was a big deal well she can sometimes not come to work for two weeks at a time and so evidently it was just running the whole time so we um, called the plumber uh, repaired it immediately but we're here to appeal for a, a certain amount of forgiveness and the increase over last quarter is fourteen hundred dollars so we're proposing to split the difference if you would be willing to consider that that's pretty generous i was thinking you know i mean that's i i think that's relatively fair terry do you have any input on this since you run the, run the system well i mean it's just um, it's tough when you're renting and you can't get in the unit, you know. Yeah. yeah. That's, uh, I mean, we've I done it in the past for other people. I mean, yeah, we have, yeah. that when we find a, a bad problem, we've kind of been yeah. forgiveness, say. Yeah. Uh, we didn't want that long ago before we did it at the park house. Right. Uh, we've done it, I know, for the Pierce Hall. We did recently for the Pierce Hall. Yeah. And you know, so I don't see how you can do it for one and not the other. Especially they found the problem, they fixed it. I mean, you didn't we didn't have to you know It is fixed, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Just replace We that we worked on it and you know, I went over with them and we couldn't figure it out until I called the tenant and she said, Yeah, that thing runs. I didn't think it was a big deal. <laughs> the day I went over with him, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. The day I went over with him, it wasn't running. Right. So of I mean. But then yeah. the day of the reading, and then the Wednesday was only three days. It had already run 800 five, gallons. Yeah, 800 gallons. So that's when we knew we had something really bad. We had to. But you know, you go in there and look. You can't hear anything. Yeah. The needle's not moving. I mean, at that much, you'd think it'd be moving. I mean, it must have stuck underneath and run the full tilt boogie, man. I mean, yeah, that's all I could see. <laughs> it was unfortunate because we don't go there in terms of, like, that's a private bathroom. Yeah. And because all our offices are upstairs, this one's downstairs. Yeah. We don't hear it. Don't hear it. it was in kind of a. She doesn't really come in until, you know, I mean, she basically doesn't come in for months at a time in the winter. So we really kind of got it. So, excuse me, but what was the overage again that we had? Uh, it was over $1,400. <laughs> a lot. That's a lot of toilet flushing. Yeah. Are we not even Do we yes. have a way to know we, that we we have solved the problem? We did solve the problem. I mean, we yeah. called a plumber. We could ask him to. Is write there a, a way to check the meter to make sure that the use? Uh, it's down? gone way down. Okay. 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 The, the difference between the in fact, I see it in the master meter. Yeah. yeah. You check it again then after. I, yeah. Okay. And then I check my mass. My master meter is gone. I don't use nearly a lot. Awesome. That that's a good thing to do. No, I, I think that's that's a the difference fair between the Park House that. and Pierce Hall on this one is that the others are kind of nonprofits and this is a private entity. Right. But I still feel in fairness. But you know, if this were to happen somewhere else in town, we would be obligated to follow can, suit again. Well, yeah. I think this might be um, for the viewing audience might be a little bit of a wake up call to. Make right. sure <laughs> that you know, people live on the water system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, just watch I mean, it carefully. Mm -hmm. It's a tough thing, but it'd be good yeah. to get it out in the public. So but no, I'm yeah. Put it in the paper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're pretty non-profit too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you never know what's happening. That's no, a reasonable Because in my house, we, I think, Terry, we have the highest residential water bill in town, I think. And, um, no, I think you have for the 
and Ken went to get me. But ours is crazy expensive, and you know, we finally got a plumber, and we looked and looked and looked, no leak, no leak, no leak, no leak anywhere. Had him play, replace the silicox on the outside of the house, and went down a hundred bucks a quarter. And we didn't, we never saw a leak, but something was going on. So, yeah, get it out there. It's like people could cut their water bills if they just mm -hmm. have somebody come in and do a quick audit. It's of true. Water I had a, I had a toilet that was making just a little tiny thing. Yeah, yeah. Sound. You could just hear this little whisper sound. And I didn't know what it was, but then um, I had friends over, and her husband's a plumber, and he said, you know, after he used the bathroom yeah, yeah, yeah. and they fixed it. And my water bill went down. Hooray. Yeah. <laughs> I think if you take a, if you really want to check it, you take a, toilet, take a paper towel and rub it around the inside of it. If it's leaking anyways, you're going to get, the paper towel's going to be wet. In the bowl, yeah. In the bowl. Yeah. yeah. yeah well, I mean, that takes care of your overflow and your proper valve. Yeah, we put. Uh, we were told to put food coloring in the tank and then yes. see if it bleeds out into the bowl. Yeah. yeah, you can do that too. Well, I mean, for a quick check. Yeah. And you'd be surprised because we've had issues before with people complaining about their. No, we don't have a problem. And I've been. I don't know how many houses since we put these meat meters in, and I find the toilet not leaking like that. But I mean, yeah, just because it's gone on fifty, you know, about hundred bucks. I think the issue for us was the concrete comparison to last quarter, same time. <laughs> right. No, you know, we're not it's, it, no, it's just no. like, oh, it's high. Well, in relation to what? But yeah, that's ridiculous high. Yeah, and there, do you ever take the opportunity to, if you notice super high bills, to. I know, called them before they even got their bills. Yeah, oh, yeah. 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 I met with them. Jerry mm -hmm. was on the phone. Yeah. Yeah. And I came right down. And, yeah. As soon as Julie puts them in the book, she calls me. I'm in here the next day, mm -hmm. or that day. That yeah. day was that. That was. Cool. I yeah. really look through the book and we do it then. I really didn't figure it out until I called the tenant mm -hmm. uh, because the, the the thing wasn't running. Yeah, and I went over there with her before, and I called her, and she said, "Yeah, it's been running through the winter," and I, I didn't think it was a big deal. <laughs> 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 So will you generate another invoice or should we just subtract it when we pay this one? Uh, I have to check. I don't know how it's done in the past, but I'll find out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll take care of that. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Flush in peace. <laughs> and this was filmed for awareness. <laughs> yes, yes. Your toilet too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Joan, you got any updates um, for us? A couple of things. Um, one is to remind you that e friends will be coming tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Uh, for their annual meeting with us, you know, discussing the highway annual financial plan. They're going to be going over uh, new road permit, uh, road standards. Uh, I know they were upgraded a little bit back in 2013, and they're, I think they're finished, but all I have right now is a final draft. This is um, a sample of it. Um, they'll be having, they'll probably give us the final, final one uh, and discuss it tomorrow. It's gotten a little more sophisticated than it used to be to be more in compliance with the municipal roads general permit requirements. One of the main things I've noticed on here is that they're asking you to um, affirm or confirm that you will follow all the requirements of the municipal roads on hydrologically connected sections of the road. Mm -hmm. But then they also ask you whether you're, you're willing to do that on non-hydrologically connected parts of the roads as well, which is not required by the permit. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted to maybe lob this over to, to Cooter about that because in my mind, I just wonder if you're you know, working on, say, Quarry Hill Road and sections of it are hydrologically connected according to the map and others are not, but if you're doing a grading or whatever it is or ditching, you're not gonna stop doing one practice for a section and then start it again, are you? So no, no. I was I was thinking more of roads that are none of the road is hydro. Not a lot of roads in Rochester, but right. So 
if we had a section of the road that isn't, we could clean the ditch with the grader without having all the extras to go through the the higher level. The right. But in roads where it's like close and then not close, and you might as no, well just do no, no, yeah. because if you're there yeah, and you've got 50 feet or 100 feet, yeah. if you're doing it, you're just going to continue doing right. what you were doing. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know. We will hear from them tomorrow, but I suspect it's possible if they're not doing it now. It could come in the future where get bonus points uh, if you say that you will apply these principles everywhere maybe on you know grant applications or something like that uh just a, a thought um and we can discuss it tomorrow with those guys and yeah. see what yeah. they say probably have more to say about that yeah. yeah um and then uh let's see yeah the other thing is going back to um the theme of bridges um I took a look at the annual inspection reports that we get every year. Mm -hmm. They're now just available online, easily downloadable. Um, and I made one copy for you, and I'd love to make more. There are nine, I just looked at the town-owned bridges. Mm -hmm. States, you know, do their own thing um, on those bridges. Uh, and there are nine uh, town-owned bridges that they inspect. I assume that's all the town owns. And of those, six came with uh, suggestions for maintenance work. And some of them, most of them, seem to be things that have been mentioned uh, for the past several years. And you know, it's getting to the point where uh, the last comments were in 2017, where they say it really would be a good idea to do X, Y, Z, whether it's painting or greasing or fixing the road approaches, or in some places, the abutments have a lot of scour. And of course, that just gets yeah. worse over time. So um, my suggestion would be to take a serious look at this list. And um, you know, given that it's, you know, obviously some of these might be somewhat expensive, but just think about down the line, if you ignore the needs that over time, it's going to be very expensive yeah. to replace a bridge. So start thinking about one, one a year or something like that. And I talked a little bit with Kuda this afternoon about whether Road Crew could do any of those projects. I really don't know. Um, we'd have to take a look at what they are. It may be that some of these things just need to be contracted out. Um, uh, so it's, I think it's really important that we start doing that now, when, you know, whatever, the next five years or something to prevent any further damage. Yeah, this would be good to talk um, tomorrow with Chris Bump about too. Now, the Better Roads program does have experts right. who will come out for free and consult with us about what's needed, how it can be done, what's the best you know approach for minimal cost, that sort of thing. So if we want to pursue that, we could as well. <coughs> so, do that. so I think that's all I have. All right, that's enough. <laughs> Thank you. Can I just have one quick question? Yeah. Under the new business, it, there was a thing about annual road maintenance agreements. That was she was talking about. No, that was with um, uh, from the Forest Service. The okay, so the final draft of so, uh, their agreement is, 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 is also a road maintenance agreement? Or did I misunderstand? That's that a road agreement that we've had with the U.S. Forest Service for a number of years. No, I'm talking about the thing B-Trans is talking to you. I'm going to talk about tomorrow, I'm sorry. No, this is, it's, that's something totally different. Okay, so what is it that It's an annual visit they make to all the towns. It's done by the district office, and they talk about what our highway budget is, how we're going to, what plans we have for improvements or projects this year. Uh, we discuss possible grant funding and just related things to okay so they're going over plans for road related work that, that no it's a financial plan okay going over a financial plan for road related work it's a financial plan for it's the whole highway budget they review it with us okay to review the town's highway budget yes. okay thank you sorry i just want to make sure i have it as clear as possible because it's often augmented by state contributions to that Every year, yeah, we yeah. got an application from the state. Thank you. All right. Um, nobody here from the library, but Mark?
Yes, uh, I spoke to Dune a while ago about Oscar Gardner. Some of you guys know him, some of you don't. But yeah. for appointment for the constable vacancy. Um, although things have changed a little bit since I've talked to him. And you've got my letter, I guess, everyone. So yeah. okay. if it's an effective uh, April 21st, I'm resigning. Um, I mentioned something before at town meeting that something may change. A lot of returning that came my way. So Right, that's yeah, correct. So, so, um, so, so what did you? What I'll be working full time for Windsor County. For Windsor so County, all more money, full benefits, and all that good stuff. So I'll still be in the valley, but not technically working in the roster per se, unless there's a bridge deal or something going on. <laughs> so, uh, and the same has happened with Bethel as well. So, yeah. So I'll still be working in Granville. So, okay, but. Uh, so as I said, Oscar, some of you know, some of you don't, know, uh, looking for work, and I think it'd be a good fit, but that's up to you guys to decide. Yeah. But you were going to appoint him for checking, I think, so training and possible fill-in anyway. I don't know if you guys have discussed that at all amongst yourselves. No, but you have some uh, little information? Did you sure, bring I can give you some history on me. Yeah. Um, somebody can see me. Uh, my name's Oscar Gardner. I'm currently retired from the Addison County Sheriff's Department after 17 years, which I was I attained a rank of corporal. In that time frame, I've been an FTO uh, field training officer. I've done patrols, um, governor highway safety work. Um, I'm certified by the Vermont Criminal Justice Training Council at the same level as Mark 2E. Uh, I, I come with many years of experience dealing with the community as well. Um, there's, uh, I was a, the systems that Mark used, I'm, I'm currently uh, aware of, he's using Spillman. Um, just so you also guys know, I'm also taking a position with Killington PD. I start there Monday, uh, the 15th. Um, I live over in Brandon, so. Just I'm, barely. Just, huh? just barely. Just barely in Brandon, I'm five miles from the, from the top of the mountain, I live down on uh, Newton Road. Uh, one of the one of the issues with new with living in New Brandon is I don't know how long I'm going to be on Newton Road because FEMA is buying my house, so that could be a couple of years or it could be a year. Um, what else would you like to know? I mean, I, I I've done a lot of law enforcement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds like it. So your certifications are um, up to date and equal to yes. what Mark currently has? I, for, I don't know. I have done my domestic violence training. I've done my use of force training. I'm currently certified with with, um, with everything I'm required to meet at this time. Um, there are some certifications that I think they're going to come up later on this coming summer. Um, Tasers? I am Taser certified. Okay. I'm not certified to carry his taser. Okay. So I'd have to take a, a taser class. Okay. Um, We're going to talk about that Thursday, actually. Scales? I am yes. commercial vehicle certified. Yes. certified I I'm not federally certified, but I am state of Vermont certified to, to do. To Basically, the same certification. Same I certification have. Mark okay. has. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm A ride certified. Okay. The UI cert, that's the advanced uh, roadside impairment detection mm -hmm. train. Um, I did mention I was an FTO, so that means I'm a field training officer, which in this capacity doesn't, unless we have a, a second person that we need FTO, it's not, not mm -hmm. all that important, but maybe for killing to PD it might be, okay. um, and other agencies. Mark uh, did some uh, uh, click it or ticket. As a matter of fact, uh, before leaving the Sheriff's Department a couple, three years ago, I was actually a part of the Northern DUI Occupational uh, OP Task Force. Okay. I would go up to St. Albans under while well, driving a sheriff's vehicle, working with that task force. So yeah, I've done some Governor's Highway Safety work, uh, actually helping uh, Al Fortin uh, with the uh, task force in middle in Addison County. Mm -hmm. Currently, um, we don't have any of that. There's no funding there. Right. Sure. I'm road. I'm also checkpoint supervisor certified. Mm -hmm. um, I am not tax certified because I, I I have to do that training. So there there's something I did forget. Okay. Tag, that tag officer is the ability to use Spillman and 
run 27s and 28s, which is what Mark well, does. Well, to clarify that, what it is is each department has to have their TAC officer. So he's Spillman certified to use a Spillman, but he'll have to at some point convert to a TAC officer for our license right. that we have here. Okay. So, which is not a big deal. It's just a matter of him taking a, a class. That's a lot of language that I don't understand. That's right, I understand that. But that's a, it's another training he has to take, which is like a four hour class he's got to take. And I think it's available in July. So it's not a big deal. He can, he'll be fine until then, for instance. And uh, plus, I'll still be on spilling myself. And I was, yeah, I can maintain that until that. There's some point. administrative things that he's going to have to show me. Yeah. That obviously anybody would have to learn coming in new. Right. Um, but I, when you ask your question, if I'm if I've got my training done, my required training that I have to have to keep my certification mm -hmm. is done. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to do domestic violence. I just had that. Mm -hmm. I could provide my training records. Um, I also, uh, we may not know it, but I also developed the uh, program that Mark does. Our login, our login system for my time sheets that we use mm -hmm. that yeah. maintains our traffic stops and uh, and whatnot, so. What we see. Yes. Well, yeah. and, and more, yes, but yeah. yeah. We have to stay mandates that we record all our traffic stops, uh, who it was and why we stopped them, racially and ticketed, uh, search the car, all that type of stuff. We have okay. to report on a yearly basis. And, right. So we didn't have the means of really doing that, but so the software that he developed that did that for us for a reason. Okay, well, we, we can talk further and go deeper. Of um, course, yeah. What, what is your current uh, obligation to Kimlington? How many hours per week? Oh, uh, you know, I wish I could answer that. Because okay. I just start Monday. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so thinking you know when to go home? <laughs> this thing is around 15. I think it's like 15 or 20 okay. hours. Yeah. Okay. It's about uh, yeah. full time. That's fine. <laughs> right. Part time. Yeah, I'm, not I'm not doing anything full time right now. Okay. Uh, it's hard for me to sit there and commit to you guys when I'm going to sit. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be here next five years. I can't tell you that. <laughs> bought my house two weeks later in contract my house is being flooded so we're looking at relocating and yeah you know I'm never gonna sell that house uh, in its current situation so uh, if the government wants to buy it from me I'm not allowed to buy it um, well great um, could I get your phone number just so I don't, don't need to spread that out on the, the web but might as well do I have a written resume? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I could dig one up. No, I don't have one with me today. No, I was just asking if you had one. No, not on me today. No. Just as a reference. Okay. I like I said, I could provide you one. If you need one. Okay. Yes, sir. She had a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, well, it wasn't just it wasn't for you. It was exactly for them. Yeah. Uh, I just wondered if you, is this something you'll take under advisement and make a decision maybe at the next meeting or what? Uh, this is just information. Yeah. Okay. Not, not, you know, okay. So no decision to make. Yeah. So no, this I is so. okay, straight thank you. And Mark made this introduction and it's great to, to know you and know what our options yes. are. Yeah. Yeah, just like, you know, uh, well, depending on, I mean, obviously, I'll take the time to transition somebody because there's certain things that are got to do at the state level that's got to be modified because of access and all that. And, uh, so, uh, like I said, we've got a little bit of time here to go, um, but before things happen. But even after I start for the other place, I'll still have some Needs leeway to do some stuff. Yeah. I have one question. What's yeah. your commitment to spider da data? That's my business. That's my, I know, but what's your commitment to it? Every morning at four o'clock in the morning, I get out, have my cup of coffee, walk my dogs, and write code. How would that, how would that impact your your police work? I don't don't know if it would impact. Tell you the truth, I uh, I mean I don't. I guess I don't. I'm not following your question. Is there you're asking me if there's a conflict? Well, is it is it must be a timeshare. I mean, you have a business, and you also have to take on a couple of police jobs. How much okay. time does it take? I mean, I'm asking. I'm just asking. Is this are you comfortable? Must oh be yes, I'm comfortable with doing with, with, with doing this. Yes, and taking on Kelly, and I'm, I'm I'm hoping maybe even to take on some of Bethel at the same time. Okay. Uh, it, it also depends how many hours you're going to want me to work. Okay. Um, okay. 
kilometers. If, if it's 20 hours, 20 hours there, and whatever time I have, yeah. I mean, I was used to working 71 hours a week at one point. Um, it, that's a variable that I can't answer. Uh, I'd like to sit here and say, yeah. But, you know, here's that variable. We have to put those blocks in place or that variable in place for me to sit here and give you <laughs> an honest uh, decision on that. But my commitment to spider data, is, and I'm serious, I get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, I have two dogs, I have a cup of coffee, and I spend maybe two or three hours every morning writing code, which some of you on a laptop would be very monotonous. So it's nice to get out and then hit the road after yes. that and do something yeah. else. Let it wait for the Because usually by the, <laughs> usually by the second cup of coffee, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to put the, ready to go the laptop down. down. Yeah. So, uh, plus, I actually love law enforcement. I've never done it for the money. I have a really good history in it. Um, so, all right, cool. Okay, it was nice to meet you. And you're thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Thanks for bringing it in, Mark. Yep. Um, cool. Um, moving on to road enforcement. How's um, what's new in the highway world? Air Aside air from it snowed again. <laughs> <laughs> we have a new air compressor. Our other air compressor burned out. Mm -hmm. uh, and motor for it was going to be about $1,200 by the time I got it here. So we bought uh, a new compressor for $1,700. Not knowing. We don't even know how old the old one is. Old enough to die, I don't think. <clears throat> well, it, it was a few tense moments. Right. Yeah. It was smoking and spikes were flying. And ah. People were panicking, including me. <laughs> Get out! No. <laughs> Call you. Uh, other than that, that's, uh, that's about it. We're getting lots of compliments on the um, strategically placed stone as the mud <laughs> season comes on. I'm getting more compliments and complaints. So thank you for that. That's good. Yeah. Uh, the whole order is here. It's not on the road yet. I'm not convinced mother's over yet. No, I don't think so. I don't think it is. No, it's not over yet. This no. week may really go for the rain. Yeah. And yeah, it's no new day, still. Yeah. I just want to thank Kuda for, for finally getting rid of the snow on the park so he could get rid of the ice and get rid of the limbs mm -hmm. yeah, and, and the other greenery. <laughs> thank As you. a person on the park committee, I, I also want there to will thank be more. him for, he and John and the crew for getting all those big piles of limbs. Some of them have been there a long time simply because they then we got snow and they were frozen, and they were frozen yeah. in and there was nothing you could do about it. But we I it was very much appreciated. When are they gonna rake the park, do you know? Well supposedly Green Up Day is May 4th. And I spoke with Nick Pichakota last night because I wanted to put something in the paper about Green Up Day. And he told me that they're working on plans and trying to get more people to uh, in past the times they've had middle school and high school kids to help break the park but we don't have them in town anymore it's actually so, younger kids that do so the park. now um yeah. he was going to look into talking to the elementary school yeah. and green up day he's going to be doing he's going to give me some more information so that maybe so next week i should have a green up article um you know where people can get their bags etc cetera, etc cetera, and about breaking the park and that kind of stuff it's always been the recreation sports that did the raking. Right, okay. So and he said he was going to get in touch with Norm Christians in about That's it. where it needs to be. So anyway, there's a... a it's a long way from raking right now. <laughs> it's a little, a little soggy for raking right now. It'll come. That'll dry out pretty quick, though. Larry, you got anything other than the... Talking about Dean Connie's water bill tonight? Uh, <clears throat> Jeremy contacted me about doing the 
the mantle covers. I'll get a hold of them tomorrow and tell them we still got too much snow to yeah. do the system. So it'd be. I haven't seen anything from them. Usually they send us a contract on that. Do boys and king. So I'll ask him about that. Do you signed it? Yeah. Well, you signed a contract with them? Yeah. Yeah. So I'll just tell them, you know, when all well, the manholes right now, you can't see. Yeah. Yeah. They can wait another day. So as soon as that. Don't need to be fighting with the ice to pop the lids. No. And then I got a leak down the by Bobby Sherman's old house. Again. I think we got we've been talking about it. I'm pretty sure there's some hot soil there. Because we cut the pipe and the pipe looks like brand new. But every time we fix it we go like a couple feet and then it'd be about that much further and get another leak in a couple of years. But I took the pipe to Webb last time and they looked at it and they figured it's coming from the outside. So I'm thinking that I'm gonna put a piece of plastic in there and and uh, see if that would eliminate the problem. How many times have you had to or yeah. three and probably six or seven years just getting monotonous you know and like I said it's just one hole each time so I don't know whether it's coming off some stray electricity from the telephone pole side or from inside the house but if I put a short piece of plastic in there with with the copper fittings you know they make the inserts and everything and it's called CTS pipe not regular plastic so it's like 200 psi pipe but here Three quarter fittings don't fit it. It fits regular copper fittings, compression ones. So I'm thinking we're just gonna I'm gonna replace it, a section in there with that. And if it happens again, that's on the landowner. And I'll test it and see if we get if I can get any power through it. Last time we didn't get any power through it, so you know put a meter on it because we've had that issue before. In fact, one time I got knocked around my. Is that for people using water pipes to, for, for ground? Yeah, well, it's mostly you found the last time when we found it was real bad that they had a short in the panel and it's back feeding through the neutral. In fact, they could draw an arc that far with a screwdriver. Mm -hmm. Which yeah. ain't great. But down there before, we that, you know, we checked it both times and couldn't find anything. You know, went inside and, you know, check. But it keeps coming back, so and the guy at Webb thought maybe it was something. You know, the old days, they used to dump all their ash out there, and ash would be the hole in copper. But we didn't see any evidence of that. In fact, the soil's pretty, pretty good there. There's hardly any rocks. But I don't want to keep fixing it either, because just pain. Yeah. Gotta be something causing it, you know. So the pipe looks new except then there's a bad spot. A pinhole. Pinhole. Hmm. And that's all it is now because it hasn't got much to leave. I mean, it's down there but it's nothing like it. Right, I'm well. just letting it dry out, you know. Yeah. So we don't keep the walkway in and everything else. Try staying out of that. Got, um, we have here a VLCT provided an updated policy regarding the conflict of interest and ethical conduct. And we just got so we'll kind of look over that and, and review it. There's no sense in adopting it until we've had a chance to, to look at it. So, yeah, compare what's old to new. So that's something that we'll um, work on. And we've got a new contract from Able Waste for. Is that? And they told us in the um, 
budget time that they were going to keep it at the same same amount. Like there was. of the missing book. Has any progress been made on that? Still, looking. still chewing through stuff looking for that. Yeah. So those still Oh, well, you know, He's we've been looking it. for it for like two months. Mm -hmm. How about we either produce the book by the next select board meeting or right. declare it gone? It's like I the, mean what it, it's like the little book that was found. There was a little book that was found um, that had been missing. It was like the nineteen fifties. It was written like board meeting book and that Mary Davis found in 2005 so I mean well, these no, some of these little of books are just records that I'd like to see so would we yeah. so okay. wait, well, we're all in agreement if it's not there it's not there well are you saying it's not there it's, it's unfindable is that what you're telling me or we don't we're, know we're yet. taking okay. a lot of measures right now looking. we ought to be able at least be able to determine that should we Determine well, what? If we got the book or not. Well, that's I mean, a bunch of boxes downstairs. It could be most I mean, anywhere. That's where we're, we're headed next, is downstairs. Yeah. Yeah. When, the, when the search is complete, we'll make a report. Yeah. Else okay, as long as you know, there's no information in there that could uh, dissuade any uh, other legal business the town has. You know, I mean, yeah, we, know. Yeah, we, know. we need that information. Looking. Okay. I haven't physically been looking, but other people have been pitching in. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. well, there's no legal decision to be. Well, I don't think that's not going to. That would affect any pending Well, decisions. we need the book need to, to determine if it affects it or not. Not if it doesn't exist. Well, yeah. does it not exist? That's what we don't. That's what we're trying to find out. We're documenting okay. everything we All have. Right. Okay. So, um, yeah, that's the whole business. And unless anyone has anything else to talk about, we're going to just sign some bills and then move on. It's not even dark yet outside. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.